So, welcome to the Perspective Podcast. We are here with Lucy Cordero. Lucy, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So, for those who don't know, the Perspective Podcast is just a little time where we kind of share our perspectives on little things in life or just backgrounds, adversity we experienced, and kind of like how we overcome and uh, just general perspective. So, Lucy... I want to go. I want to. I know it's a little weird. It's a little yeah, awkward, right? Love that. That's okay. I know. I'm still trying to get a, get get uh, nice with this. You know, it's. Um, I think you're doing great. It's a barrier we're just overcoming. Mm-hmm. But, um, I want to know a little bit about your background. I want to know like who Lucy is. Like I know we actually met through uh, real estate. Uh, it was like a what was it like a, a networking event? Correct. I think I like reached out to you and invited you randomly. <laughs> Right, and I had a great time. So thank you again for uh, for reaching out and you can, like started this, got the ball rolling for okay something um, like this. Yeah. But uh, so Lucy's a real estate agent. I want to know mm-hmm. how you got started in it, and why. I want to know a little bit about the background. Why real estate? Oh, this is actually an interesting story. I got started with real estate because I was I was working on a project a 44 lot subdivision in Southampton Mass and I was framing houses so I was actually outside the only girl on the crew of all dudes um <laughs> pretty much taking slack from them every single day and I noticed that w- one of the builder's daughter was a real estate agent and all she did in my eyes was put up her sign have an open house and she would be making a crazy amount of money on commission and I was like oh my god I'm here like slaving away hitting this hammer working outside working all all through all types of weather and she's making more than me and all she did was put up a sign I could totally do that I could so do that and that's when I got motivated I took my real estate class and got licensed and it took me like I don't know, six months after getting my license to actually do anything with it. Um, then I started. I just was like, you know what? Screw it. I've got this license. I've got to use it. And yeah, it's been almost 10 years. <laughs> and here we are. Oh, wow. There you go. That's that's quite a little uh, bit of a journey right there. For sure. So 10 years is a long time. When you first got started, did you think it was going to be a lot easier than what it was? Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. I thought it was going to be like a piece of cake. Like I was like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to put up my sign and like sell all these houses and just make crazy money. And that's that. Do you have a specific type of real estate that you like to tackle? Is it just uh, like homes for individuals? Do you work with like complexes? What's like your niche of real estate? So I am still trying to figure exactly where I want to fit in real estate. I know that for the longest time, first-time home buyers has literally been where I excel. Um, I like the hand-holding process more so, and I feel so fulfilled. Like once I'm able to help someone buy their first home, it's like a whole different feeling versus someone that you know is experienced with it. I feel like they have more of an appreciation for what it is that I do and the service that I provide, because. It's literally the biggest purchase of their life, and they're trusting me to help them through it. And knowing the impact I'm going to have on their life and like their family, it's really like, I don't know, it just makes me feel good. So you do it just to see the smiles. Yeah. You do it to help kind of adjust people into a new, a new life. Yeah, because it's like real estate is the first step into wealth building. And I feel as though growing up, I was never explained that or I was never told that. It was always like, my mom still to this day rents. And I'm like, oh man, like, that's crazy. People spend their entire lives renting and not really taking the next step of home ownership. And they don't quite understand like all the benefits that there are to being a homeowner. So. I love that. Yeah, that's definitely something that I want to go down as well. Like, um, I actually had a conversation not too long ago with another agent about what would be the best course of action for me to kind of get started in real estate. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I wanted um, I want to build a portfolio. Okay. You, you know? can do it. Yeah, I plan on it. You like, will. I know. Um, so I'm really excited about that. But yeah, there's there's like a there's some as time goes on, people think that they need realtors less and less for some reason, right? With the whole social media and stuff. 
But I strongly, strongly, strongly disagree with that. Because just with a phone call that I had the other day, there's information that you don't even know that is like can really help you like leverage building wealth. For sure. You know, so I had this conversation about like just like, for instance, let's say you like um, like you have like 100K uh, down, down payment or willing to invest in real estate. What would be the best course of action? Would it be multiple like a like a multifamily? Would it be like. Should I just go for a single family and just try to live off of that, right? That's just obviously mm-hmm. more of a liability at like, but it's just like trains of thought, right? What's the best way to get into that? Is it possible to go commercial? Is it possible to like, what What would be the best course of action? So I, that was a question that I asked her and I want to ask you that too. Okay. Well, it depends on what your goal is. Like how many properties do you want to get out of this? Like, what is your vision? Because there's so much that you can do with that $100,000. You can, you know, you could invest it in a single family property. I don't see it getting you the return that you're looking for. If you're hoping to build a portfolio, you need to figure out what type of portfolio do I want? Do I want multifamily investment properties? Do I want single family properties? Do I want condos so that it's less on me and more on the association? So first, identify what your goal is. I personally would invest in multifamily investments because they have the highest cash flow. So you can purchase, like for me, I would buy four families, as many four families as I possibly could, um, and then keep moving up. So if at least a three or four family to start, that would be where mm-hmm. I would start. Um, they're harder to come by. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's a lot more competition for them. I would look for something that needs a little bit of work. Um, something that I can refinance after completing some repairs and then pull out all of my equity out of that property and then reinvest it into another property. Um, Most agents call it the Burr method where you buy, renovate, rehab, rent it out and put it back and then like pull the money out and invest into another property. That I think is your best bet to continue growing wealth because that one property will help you pay for the next one and then the next one will pay for the next one. And then before you know it, you have an investment portfolio of 100 multifamily properties that are all cash flowing and you can retire yourself, your family, their kids, their your grandkids, like, et cetera. Right. That's definitely what I would. That's a dream. Yeah. You know, um, but so we're in the Connecticut market, mm-hmm. right? As you know. So where would be the best place to even look for like a multifamily house? Ooh. In Connecticut, there's plenty of options as far as looking for multifamily investments. Um, Like, I was going to say the most prop, you'll see the most in like Hartford, then you'll also see a bunch in like Waterbury or New Britain. Um, If you're looking for multifamilies, those will be the areas where you're going to see the most of. You ideally want, if you're investing in multifamilies, you want something that's like centrally located where people, where it's an easy commute for people. Cause you have to think most of the, the people that are gonna be living there are gonna be renting. What are the things that they are looking for when they're looking for a rental place? They either want it close to schools, close to public transportation. They want, you know, amenities nearby, like in case they don't have a car, they wanna be able to walk places. They wanna be able to, have all the conveniences possible. So when looking for a location, I I would look up, actually, I would look up how far is the closest Starbucks. I know that sounds crazy, um, but why I would do that is because Starbucks does so much research into where they put their locations that I'm just gonna piggyback off of them. They already researched the area enough to put in a location that they believe is gonna be successful. So if I see that there's a multifamily property that just came on and there's a Starbucks five minutes away, I'm gonna jump on that opportunity. Mm, wow, that's like a nice little nugget right there. <laughs> just a little one. No, I love that. My thing is like, I wanna, if, if I'm going down the multifamily route, I wanna have a place where like people will take care of the property. Fair. You know what I mean? I don't want people just like destroying the property and I put all this money into repairs and then it just com- becomes cash negative. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like, I don't know. I've heard some bad things about like Hartford area, New Britain, Waterbury, as far as like rental properties or just people taking care of the property. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's just like my discrepancy is like, um, 
so ideally i know this might not be plausible but like west harford is like yeah. where i would love i know there's a few three families over in like the i don't know if you know the area it's kind of like um just down the road you know what i mean they have like a little section of multi families but west harford is so expensive for sure you know what i mean so is that even plausible it's possible for sure anything on this earth is possible so it is possible for you to find a multifamily investment in west harford that's affordable to you in order for you to rent it out and make it and make some income from it i would say that you're gonna have bad tenants no matter where you are like it does not matter you will likely have a bad experience mm -hmm. my recommendation is to have an attorney on retainer because that's going to solve your problems also make sure that you take your time vetting people don't just a lot of people fall circ like victim of circumstance they're like oh, okay well the property's been vacant two months i still haven't rented it out i have you know these applicants um sure i'll just take this person because during the process it felt like i felt like they were a good choice right they like, want the cash flow yeah what you need to do is make sure that you are not contacting like just their previous landlord that you're going back two or three landlords because their current landlord more than likely wants them out so they will Talk say whatever it is that you want to hear they will say that to you oh, just to get them out of their property i didn't know you could do that talk to a landlord yes, past ones for three, sure three four Jeez. yes you can ask for as many references as you want and I would I would highly recommend going back two or three because yeah. the last one, like I said, is not going to give you the most accurate information. I like that. There's, there's that. Um. <laughs> no, that's good information. So no matter what, there's going to be bad tenants. But like on, on also like another thing while like I'm like pinpointing on West Hartford and I don't know if there's any towns that are like this, but the vacancy rate in West Hartford is like barely anything yeah. you know what i mean people want to live in west hartford so if anyone moves out i fill out that spot very easily very quickly for sure you know what i mean so that's like why also why west hartford is very appealing to me and i don't know if there's any other similar towns in this area or if west hartford is just the hub well glass and Mary would be similar to west hartford that's another highly desirable area where you're not going to find as many multifamily properties where rental income is going to be pretty high um, a lot of these towns that have like like a little mini downtown area that is very affluent you're gonna get you know you're gonna have people wanting to be in those towns for think about like schools schools is probably the number one like reason why people want to live in these certain towns or areas they want to get into the school system so a lot of renters they're gonna be like oh man yeah of course i'm willing to get you know, I can't afford to buy a home here, but I can afford to rent here. And my kids are going to have the same opportunities as the people that, you know, own properties here. Um, or people may work in the area and they may not, you know, want to buy in the area because they're, you know, relocating within a couple of years, whatever the case may be. But those drivers. Got it. So clearly you have like way more experience than I ever would when it comes to like dealing with rentals, tenants. Just understanding real estate in and out um so let's say like i have my heart set on west hartford mm -hmm. but no properties are opening up i'm getting nothing like it's just like and then it's just time ticking time ticking time ticking what would you think would be the best move at that point so you have to get very very clear on what it is that you want and i would of course i'm a realtor i'm gonna say let it out let me hear it talk to the agents make sure that you're on their radar and have you know make those connections because agents have access to properties that are not yet on the market they're going to be the first ones to be able to tell you hey this property is coming soon the more connections that you make the more agents that you talk to um, there are more possibilities for you now mind you not all agents are going to be receptive to give you this information for free or for, you know, like tell you, hey, I have this property coming on the market. They may want to keep that to themselves or they may want to keep that for their clients. So I know that I have an inventory of off market listings that I first send them to my investor clients and then let them know, hey, this property is coming soon. Let me know if you're interested. I can set something up for you. And then I will pass it along. Then, you know, if my client decides to list it publicly on the MLS, then we list it and then for everyone to see. 
but there are always those opportunities before the property hits the market. Another little thing that I would say is that there is power in a golden letter opportunity, which is something that I do for my clients when they're really clear on what it is that they're looking for. We can market directly to properties that are like that, that meet that criteria you're looking for. We can market to them directly. Um, I have access to making phone calls, calling these people, and I know that I've done it where I set up appointments for my buyers that I'm working with on these off-market properties because I'll call the seller directly and say, hey, I have a client, they want your property, do you want to sell it to them? Yes, no, okay, next. And I will do that for the people that I'm working with. And there's agents, other agents that are similar that will do the same. Got it. So if that fails, like no one wants to sell their property, Mm -hmm. no one, like, you know, I'm just not able to find one at all what do you think i should do should i just continue to keep on waiting i would say move over to the next town the closest town because as you're waiting interest rates are still going up and prices are still going up so it's best to just get into the market and then as you're already in it more opportunities will appear and you'll create more opportunities that way right right okay so now let's talk a little bit about numbers Right. Mm -hmm. So I think in West Hartford, three family, there's not really many available, but I think it's like 500,000 or something like that, maybe. Give or take. Something like that. Um, Now, what do you think would be the best way to kind of get in there? Should I put the whole lump sum, the 100,000, or should I just save up more money? And then, you know, like, what what would I do? What would be the best thing to do? Because if I put all of my money in there, then I'm left with nothing. What if what if I need repairs? Like, what's the percentage I should deviate? Should I save some more? What do you think like the best way to go? So you have a couple of different options. If this is your first time investing and you don't own any properties, I would highly recommend considering going with like a traditional FHA financing and being an owner occupant for one of those units because you can get into that property with three and a half percent down. You can then invest the rest of the money in repairs or you can invest it in another property because you got your foot through the door there, you're getting income, you're getting cash flow and then you can move up to the next property. Or you would put down, if you're just gonna buy it strictly as an investment, 20% is what you're gonna have to put down on the property. Got it, which means I would need more, right? No, I would be just at the cusp. Yeah, but you also have to think, you have your down payment, you or your deposit, right. you have your down payment, then you have closing costs. A lot of people don't prepare to pay for closing costs. And in this market, sellers are not giving closing cost credit. So that's another 4%. Yeah, on top of it. On, on top of it, yeah. Got it. I think I would definitely probably go with the FHA. F- FHA. Yeah. And then Connecticut has Chaffa too, which is an awesome program. They're like literally giving money away for you to buy a property. I think I saw like a video where someone was talking about that, but like it's there's a lot of fees hidden on the back end. Like they're trying to screw you in a way. Um, no, not necessarily. As far as like the rate is slightly higher, but then again, you're getting them to give you this money. It's like if you don't have the money up front, you can use this as a benefit. And it's kind of like, of course, the rate is going to be higher because there's more risk because you're not putting your own money. So they're like, hmm, it's a little riskier to lend you this money. So I'm going to charge you a little bit more, which is like for everything else. Like, how much do they? How much do they give you? So the rates are comparable to what you can like get right now. I think the rate, we're just under 7% again. So, mm-hmm. and it depends on your credit score, but the rates are, they're posted on their site. So you can like literally check in to see what their rate is currently. Got it. And what, what how much money are we talking about? So they will give you up to 50K. Got it. Yeah. Okay. That's and it depends on certain areas. Certain areas would get more. Certain areas would get less. Now, is this only if you don't have the money to put down a down payment or no. even if you do? Even if you do have the money to put down, you can still qualify for it. Okay. So there'll mm-hmm. be that on top of it. Yeah. So. Which makes home buying a little bit more affordable when you got a price tag of $500,000 and you have 100000 to put down and you're getting $50,000 as well from the state of Connecticut. Now um, your mortgage is actually only 350000 instead of 500000 Um, What was I going to say? I get lost in so many thoughts. <laughs> Don't worry. <It's> like, <laughs> I am like squirrel, 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 squirrel. I... Yeah. You're giving me so much information. I'm just like, I'm like putting spider webs of information. I'm like, okay, like how do I like 
navigate, maneuver, and then ask questions. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't worry about it. You know? Um, so with the FHA, 3.5%, so if I put 3.5%, the bare minimum, mm-hmm. would my uh, would my like other two floors be able to handle just the mortgage or would I be coming out of pocket every month? It should. You should be. If you're having, if you have a three family, mm-hmm. your other two, pro- the other two, as long as they're occupied, should be paying your mortgage. Covered That's, completely. Yes. And we're looking at like what, 2,500, 2,800 in West Harvard? Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. So if I do the fi- the, the FHA, mm-hmm. right? And then that leaves me with a good chunk still left over. Yes. Could I just like right off the bat go into another town and just like get put that 20%? Yeah, you could. Because it's an investment property and you just have to put down the 20% and keep on moving. And then have all three floors occupied. Mm-hmm. And then just keep it, keep it rolling. Yes. They use, most lenders will use up to 80% of the income you're receiving and count that as your income so it makes it a little easier for you to to scale of loan correct understood i like that i'm sorry i'm like cutting you off yeah no no worries i was gonna say don't worry i was like i have adhd i can do the same to you so like yeah don't mind me yeah that's good um dang i'm I'm getting like kind of like excited so now another option that i was thinking about right so like let's say that i wanted to buy my parents home Right, like completely paid off. They want to, we'll do like what is it like seller financing or seller? Yeah, you could do that. Seller something like that. Um, do you think that's a wise move? Doing seller financing to purchase your parents' home. It depends on again what your goal And then getting into a, and then getting into a rental property. So it again depends on what your goal is, and it also depends on the deal that your parents give you. Um, because if you're purchasing it for market value, it is and it's only a single family property, you're not able to use that. You, you'll be able to buy another property depending on your intention. Like if you plan on staying here, you're gonna have to put 20% down to move to the, ne- to the next property. If you're planning on using this as an investment property and then moving into another property, then you could still qualify for an FHA loan as long as your intention is to live in the property. Right. Do you think that's a wise move or do you think it'd be better just to kind of put like the FHA on a three family and then start moving, put a 20% on another multifamily? So I think it really depends on your situation. It depends on like why you're doing it. I want to wealthy, baby. (laughs) If you are trying to build, if your goal is to build wealth, then I would go with the FHA route and then keep moving on. I would buy a four family with an FHA loan or a three family with an FHA loan. Or there's another really good loan program that like nobody likes to talk about, which is NACA, N-A-C-A. They actually are a private organization. They lend based on character, not based on your credit. And it's like you can buy down your interest rate with them um, and they have no closing cost. So it's like an awesome program if like... I have like this master plan in my mind. It's like first you buy a four family with a NACA loan, which is actually a conventional loan product. A lot of people don't know that, but go with that first four family. Then you can say you can live in that one, have one of those units, then move down to a three family property. You can move into the three family putting down five to 10% or you could do with a, another conventional loan, or you can do an FHA loan and put down three and a half percent. Because you are moving up, even though you're technically moving down because it's a four family or three family, the lent- banks will see that as you are just bettering your life, your quality of life. So they won't take it as like it's an investment, even though your end goal is to have as many investment properties as possible. It's a way of you continuing to buy properties with putting very little money down, okay? So the next step after you buy your three family with either another conventional loan or FHA financing, anywhere between three and a half to 10% down, then you move down again to a two family property. Again, you can do, you will not, you can only have one FHA loan out at a time. So you would either have to refinance the, if you purchased it with the FHA loan, the last one, the three family, you'd have to refinance it so it's conventional. Or you can um, purchase it just with a conventional loan. Again, the amount down is going to be the same between 3.5% to 10% at most. 
then once you've purchased your two family property, you can then buy your single family home and that is the home that you intend to live in. Again, for that, you could go FHA again or conventional. Again, very little money down. With less than 10% down altogether, you could have four properties and have your retirement plan right there because you have a four family that's fully occupied paying for itself. You have a three family that's fully occupied paying for itself. And now you have a two family fully occupied paying for itself. You should have enough cash flow for all of those properties that your single family should be free. I love it. That sounds mm-hmm. that sounds beautiful. Now, my thing is, uh, there are so many numbers in there. I need to see it on paper. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know what you're saying. Um, I will definitely work on something to put down on paper so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I would greatly appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure the viewers as well, For sure. if you're following along, I'm sure they would like that as well. Mm-hmm. I Make think that would be easier too. quite helpful. You know, maybe you can get it in video form or whichever form possible. I think I might have a video already up regarding this on my social media accounts. Um, I'm pretty sure I did something, but I will look into my records and then just repost it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I want to like be able to talk on that, but like I feel like I'm lost right now. (laughs) It's okay. So simple. Four family, then three family, then two family, then one family. You should be able to get into all of them with putting less than 10% down. If you do it in the right order. Does you location s- matter? Location does not matter. It doesn't matter where it is. It's just the type. You have to start with a four family and then move down to a three family, then to a two family, then a single family. If you buy a single family first, you're screwing yourself. Mm. What do you think the biggest obstacles are people face mentally when like getting into investment properties or trying to scale and build wealth? A lot of times people get impatient. Um I feel like that's the number one problem. Like you get impatient or you are not educated enough to make smart money moves. I don't, I hate to say it that way. Um, It's just sometimes you just, you don't know what you don't know. So I would get, you know, familiar with the location. I would also take my time learning about the different loan programs that are out there and what different things are available for you. Is there anything that you could like send over that we can link down below as far as like educating ourselves on lo- loan programs or? Yeah, for sure. Maybe we can even like put your contact info and I can reach out to you directly. Yeah, I can definitely do that. Yeah, I would love that because I think that would be really helpful. I'd be able to yeah. follow the conversation a little bit more and be part of that smart money conversation. <laughs> right now I'm in that dumb money. That's okay. You know what? We all have to start somewhere. And as long as you're willing to grow and learn, then you'll have answers. You'll get yeah, answers. no, 100%. I just need that information. You know what I mean? I think I'll, I'll make decent decisions, you know? Um, yeah. You're asking the right questions, so I think you're on the right track. Yeah, hopefully. You know what I mean? You know, I'm sure a lot of hiccups can happen in um, For sure. in real estate. And that's like, like when, when you mentioned like the first locations, like... If I can't find a, a property in West Hartford, I should probably invest in New Britain, Hartford, Waterbury, or maybe even like Newington. Yeah. You think that would be a good option? Those are all good options. It's really how much money you have to put out to how much money you're getting. So your number one plan, it should be your cash flow. Like yes. the rule of thumb is that you should at least- Seven, 10%. Um, 1% of the sale price of the home is what you should be getting at least in rental income. If it doesn't meet the 1% rule, so if a property is $500,000, you should be able to collect at least 5 k a month on that property. If it doesn't meet that criteria, you shouldn't buy it. Got it. Okay. And, um, man, so I'm just, like, nervous. Like, I'm, like, feeling like if I invest in, like, in Hartford or New Britain, like, Is my money going to be like, am I throwing my money away? No. You wouldn't be throwing your money away unless you overpay for a property. Like I just said, like if you aren't going to collect enough income for what you paid for that property, then you are likely not making the best investment. What I'd say to people, though, is like, what's the worst, absolutely worst thing that could happen if you bought a property that really wasn't producing money the worst thing is that you'd have to sell it you would lose what you invested into the property but you would no longer have that property so you'd sell it get rid of it 
yes, you lost your initial investment, but you're not in debt that rests of that amount. Just get rid of it. Buy something else. And then what do I do then? You make a better decision next time. You start to look at the things that you know you did wrong. You learn your lesson from the time before. What was wrong? Was it the It always usually comes down to price because if the property is priced right and you purchase it and you hold it, you will make your investment back. Right. So how much is rent going for in like Hartford, New Britain, Waterbury? Man, rents are astronomical right now. I just saw a two bedroom being rented for $1,500 in Hartford. That's like a lot in comparison to the past couple of years where you could buy a two bedroom for like 850 double yeah and Holy they're cow. like continuous they're like the government right now is trying to put a cap on rent how much you can raise it yeah but it's you know, what are we looking at for happens. vacancy rates I, that is a great question and i would have to pull out my phone to tell you because i don't know off the That's top fine. of my head okay excellent dun, dun, dun. Ooh, whoa oh Sorry, I'm just like looking. I'm like, okay, apparently don't check your phone in the middle of a podcast because you will notice all of your missed messages and get sidetracked. (laughs) Just a couple. Um, Okay, focus. Uh, Okay, here we go. So a a really good like tool for um, buyers, HomeSnap. I'm like totally obsessed with HomeSnap. It'll give you all the details about wherever it is that you are and it's free for you to use. And it gives you all this lovely- It's like a little pl- plug, HomeSnap yeah. if you're listening. Correct. I was gonna say, I wish they would like give me something for plugging them in, but uh, I, I don't get nothing for it. So just letting you know. It's we're just gonna, ble- we're gonna bleep it out. We're gonna, if you guys wanna find <laughs> out, send us a message. Uh, no, okay, here we go. But it gives you all of the information that you need, like all the local info. And I'm just scrolling down. Can you tell I hate silence? I'm like, ah, oh, must fill the void. I don't mind it. I don't know what the, that, that sound is, though. Tick, tick, tick. I don't like that one bit. Where is that coming from? I'm not sure. But that was loud. <laughs> it, maybe it's static from my phone. Maybe because I have my phone so close. I'm not sure. Maybe. Who knows? Here we go. And we are looking in Hartford. Go faster, phone. Faster, faster. My phone is thinking, so bear with me. You're good. I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi. Maybe that'll help. 5G service. Yeah, right, Verizon playing games for sure look it's like loading <laughs> what is that i don't know um let me refresh the page reload the page that's that's priceless can't make this stuff up come on you can do it phone See, it's because that iPhone 15 just got released. It's slowing it down. It's slowing it, slowing it. Oh my goodness. Still? Still, it's still loading. Am I connected to the Wi-Fi? Um, maybe. I'm going to try reloading the page one more time. I literally have five bars and five Is it an app or is it a zero. website? Um, it's a website. You want to pop it up on the iPad? Perhaps. I don't know if it'll give me access. Oh, you need to like log in and stuff? Yeah. Let me look for an alternative solution. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to have to go real estate app on you. Sorry. I was trying to do it the 
Old way fashion. that everyone could get access to, but it's apparently doesn't want to work. Only for the chosen few. We're gatekeeping this information. Thanks. You can connect to the Wi-Fi. Oh. If you need to. Here we go. So, dun dun dun. We are looking in Hartford. Correct. Eighty four percent vacancy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. And it's definitely not that high. Um Okay, so we are looking for Come on. Now it's pulling up just West Hartford information because I am in West Hartford, even though I typed in Hartford. Technology's great. What was this called again? So this is actually, I'm looking at, I'm at the RPR site, which is like just for realtors, unfortunately. I was on home snap, but the page wouldn't load. And then when it did load, it just gave me like Code. some, yeah. So that was not helpful at all. All right. So dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Finally, the renters are, oh, we're looking for multifamily information. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Okie dokie. insane <laughs> sorry it gave me hartford wisconsin not hartford connecticut we're hitting every <laughs> speed bump that we can okay here we are all right so it's still very much so a seller's market in the hartford market and vacancy is what we're looking for 17.2 percent I feel like at this point, I probably could have asked ChatGPT and gotten a faster answer. Doesn't than... it not use the internet, though? I think it's like only 21 data. Um, so you they can do actually now? do it. There's plugins right now so that you uh, can totally connect it to the internet so that it can give you up-to-date information. It'll search the web and it's gonna give take you all, all of our jobs. Um, I mean, it's not going to... <laughs> She's I, like, it's not taking it's not my job. take over. <laughs> no, actually, it's going to just... It's going to elevate it. It's gonna like it's a whole different ball game. Like I am totally for integration of AI. I feel like it's going to make our lives easier. I feel like we're in the beginning of I Am Legend right now. Oh yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, we you, found the cure. It <laughs> you have to embrace it. Like there's nothing else that you can do. No, I use it all the time. See, I'm like it's obsessed. I'm obsessed. It's like in my phone right now. Same. Okay. Okay, here we are. Dun, dun, dun. You know, I want to do New Britain after this. Oh, okay, <laughs> excellent. So, no worries. So, I am looking for the rental report in Hartford. I'm going to do the whole Hartford County. Do it up. Okay, perfect. So, right now, we're actually up. It's on the positive at 17%. Vacancy? Um, No, like... For the change between how many rentals are actually available to now, um, vacancy rate, activity by area, I got you right here. We are looking in the towns of, I only have Hartford County pulled up, and you mentioned Hartford. Okay, so last year there were 63 available properties. This year there are 96. Properties that are leased last year was 212. Now that are leased this year are 287. Rents last year were 1398, and now they're up 1460 on average in Hartford. So help me understand these numbers. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at you said 200 something leases. Yeah. And this year there's 90 percent that are not vacant. That are vacant. Mm -hmm. Or 90 90 that are vacant. No, and they're 
currently what information we have available, they're not showing any vacancies. They're showing that there's an increase in the percentage of need. So right now we're up like how much the need is necessary, like how many applications you're getting, how many people are looking for properties. Because just like the housing market, like people buying homes, the rental market is just the same. So when we say the need, do we mean like the need to fill those properties? Yes. Which means people aren't in them. No, the need as in people have been applying to get into the space and it's kind of like an overage. Like how many people are applying to get into the property versus how many properties are actually available. So there's a low vacancy. Correct. But I will get you an exact number for your vacancy question because this stat just kind of helps you see what properties, how many properties were available versus how many properties are being like looked at. Right. Okay. Dun dun. Because there's technically only a month of supply left. So literally within a month, if nobody else listed any properties for rent, there will be nothing available for rent. So just to kind of give you an idea as far as like vacancy most properties are not going over 30 days being vacant got it like they're constantly being occupied so that's good yeah it's good stuff so far good stuff good stuff good stuff i want more information i want specifics though excuse me so bear with me no i'm here i'm here Mm -hmm. it's like taking up your time air time i don't think you need to stress so much you're good oh i don't know i'm like i want this is a chill vibe we're just chilling (laughs) yes i picked I am super, uh, <clears throat> I like numbers as well. So I was like, rent spree. I want to get you info. The most accurate I didn't understand a word. What'd you just say? I was muttering to myself. I was like, <laughs> just want to get this information. Because I was like, that's driving me nuts. How it's kind of like roundabout information. Like it, there's nothing direct saying, okay, this is how many properties are vacant. It's just telling you this is how many properties are available and this is the activity that they've got. Mm. So, and it's got showing it. you that right now properties are getting more inquiries but, and they're showing you like how rents has it have increased, et cetera. Okay. Okay. I'm going to move on. <laughs> <laughs> move on. So what was I going on to share let me think for a second. That's a nice little glow on that light. You see, it's like blue. Is there like, you see, is, is that like, is that like a hologram? Am I bugging? No. I... You see the blue around it? Anyways. Um, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Oh, right. So the only way a property wouldn't be cash positive is if it was vacant. Depending, oh, also like we're, you know, the 1% rule. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, is there anything that else, like as far as like damages, like those that would make me lose money month after month? Um, yeah, it depends on how much damage a tenant does to the property. You also want to make sure that you're not keeping them there longer than necessary. You do want to have like routine checkups on the property. Um, how routine? Not where you're like constantly harassing your clients. It's Friday. Yeah, like, you know. <laughs> But you do want to do like a 30, 60, 90, um, just like with any other business. You want to check in with your tenants 30 days in. You want to check in with them 60 days in and then 90 days in. And after that, you can, you know, periodically every six months or every year, you want to check in on the property. Whether Every six months? That's not like a big gap? That's not a big gap? Well, if they're not paying you, yeah, that's a really big gap. But I'm saying if the ten, if you did your 30, 60, 90 and everything was good. Yep all of those checkups then i don't see why you would have to check in sooner than that okay because within that first 120 days that you have that tenant you should be able to tell like how they live their life what if they but what if they like something goes wrong and they just didn't tell me they're just Mm -hmm. like nervous and then like four months and then it just gets worse and worse you want to make sure that you have that open communication with your tenants no problem guys just let me know not like that just more so um (laughs) fuck the property up (laughs) (laughs) no definitely no um because a lot of times it they will have like 
preconceived notions like, oh, my previous landlord didn't do this or whatever the case may be. You want to set the right expectation for them and let them know. Um, Some great tips that I've learned from some of the investors that I work with is just in their application, like in, not in their application, but in their lease, they have certain things pre-written. So for example, um, Greece. They have this huge thing about grease, like no pouring grease down the drains. Like if there's grease that's poured down the drain, you as a tenant are responsible for the plumber to come to the property to solve any clogs. Things of that nature help prevent things. Um, Also like rice down the drain, like putting rice down the drain, you shouldn't do that. Um, It'll F up your plumbing. So there's certain things. If you have an oil system, telling tenants, if you put diesel fuel in the oil tank, again, you are responsible financially for replacing this. And you set the expectation up front with them, like, hey, these are the things, because sometimes people just don't know. And they do these things because they don't know that you shouldn't do these things. So never make any assumptions as far as to like what people know and what they don't know. Mm -hmm. Lay it out for them. Lay it out as clearly as you can. In the contract. In the agreement. Have, you know, you could have a separate addendum that breaks down do's and don'ts. Like, this is what you can do. This is what you shouldn't do. If you have any questions about anything that's not on this list, contact me immediately. Like, Mm. End of story. Whatever goes wrong with the property, you could have like a text line that you can set up where they can text or call. Again, it's setting the right expectation for your tenants. That's how you can prevent things from going wrong. There's always going to be something that goes wrong. Maybe somebody might lose their job and they may not feel comfortable telling you, hey, I just lost my job. I'm not sure when, you know, when I can pay your rent or whatever the case may be. If you are open and honest with your tenants and you communicate with them that, hey, listen, I'm here to help you. We want to continue this relationship. I, you know, want to make sure that this unit is occupied because, you know, it helps me. I don't have to worry about it. We can come up with a different plan, whatever the case may be. Like if you are planning on having multiple investment properties and you have a tenant that currently can't pay their rent, there are things that maybe that tenant may be able to do instead. Like you could do a barter system. Like, okay, well, you know what? You're behind or you're going to be, you know that you're going to be behind on rent. Well, guess what? I have these many properties you have to maintain. Go cut the grass at all of them. Whatever the case may be, you can find things for them to do. Also, you can help them find programs. It helps if you are aware of all the programs that are available for people that are in need if you can point them to a resource and just say, hey, here's a resource for you, take a look at this, they may help you get caught up on rent, whatever the case may be. Sometimes people just need help, like they, and they just don't know how to ask for it because they've never received it before. Or they, again, you don't know what you don't know. So my recommendation to you is if you don't wanna lose money, check in on your tenants, 30, 60, 90, check in every, other, every six months, and set the right expectation with them. Let them know anything goes wrong. This is the neck. This is what's going to happen next when something does go wrong. And as soon as you possibly can, get yourself a property manager. Like as soon as you can afford to, get a property manager and have them take care of all of those issues so that you don't have to worry about it. That sounds wise. So I heard something like if someone stopped paying rent, they could stay in the property for like six months or something. Yeah, if you're not doing things the right way. If you as a landlord are not following the law, like the tenant landlord laws, then yeah, they can stay up to a pro- they can stay on a property for 6 months and a judge can then say after they've not paid you for 6 months that you have to help them pay for their first, last and security deposit in another property. Like you need So how do I avoid that? You don't What I got to do? Don't be a slumlord. Number 1, don't be a slumlord. Do things the right way. For example, a lot of times here in the state, people don't separate the utilities or don't separate like 
for, for example, the second floor might be tied to the third floor on the electric meter. And you may not tell your tenant on the second floor that technically they're also paying the electricity for the tenant on the third floor. Then your tenant might find out and then decide, well, guess what? I'm not paying you rent until you fix it. And then legally, they can sue you for up to three times the amount of the highest bill that they received. And oh, they don't wow. have to pay you rent. And you have to pay them back for all the expenses that they had. So again, knowing these things and following the laws will help prevent you from falling into one of those situations. Again, also having an attorney on retainer for and being very, very like everyone has to fit the same standard. If it's the first of the month and you collect rent on the first of the month, make sure that in your agreement it states that by the fifth of the month the person's going to be charged a late fee, or by the fifth of the month you'll be noticed, you'll be given a notice to vacate the property, and you want to make sure that you do it the legal way, where if you hire an attorney to do it for you, they're going to be able to prepare all of these documents for you and serve the tenants the right way. Versus a lot of times people just will be like, oh, okay, well, they didn't pay me. They said that they were going to pay me on like the 19th or whenever they got their pay. Um, and they never sent out a notice to them. Guess what? You didn't send out a notice. If they don't pay you when, when if they don't decide to pay you that month, now you have to wait a whole nother month in the legal system before you can even do anything. So again, stay on top of things and document absolutely everything. Understood. What do you think the most common um, like mishaps or damages that occur? Oh, the most common would be like holes in the wall or can they, like... Can I put in my agreement for them to pay for that? Yeah. That's where you collect the security deposit as well. Like you want to make sure that your security deposit covers as much as you possibly can um, and protect yourself as much as you possibly can. Like... All right, with appliances, sometimes it's great for you to provide appliances for your tenant because it's a convenience for them. They don't have to, you know, bring appliances. Sometimes it can be a disadvantage because if one of those appliances breaks, it's your responsibility to fix it. Meanwhile, if the tenant was responsible for their own appliances, if something breaks, that's on them. They have to replace it, not you. So again, also laundry seems to be a big, big, big concern for a lot of people because of water usage. Remember that most times as a landlord, you're paying the water and sewer bill. And if you allow or if you have laundry for your tenants, it's a convenience. It's great for them. It may not be so great for you because if they decide, hey, I'm going to do laundry at all times of the day and you... Wait, what? I got to pay for the water? Yeah, you have to pay for the water. They don't got to pay for the water? <laughs> no. Why? You can put it in your lease agreement, but how are you going to meter? How are you going to make, sh like, how are you going to charge them? How do you keep track of exactly how much water they're using? Well, the water, the water company's charging me, right? I'll yeah. Then you just, whatever that number is, they pay. <laughs> yeah, I wish it worked that way. Wait, what? <laughs> yes. I said, I wish it worked that way. But they pay the electricity, though. They pay for yes. like, the heating, the gas, all the other stuff, right? It depends on what your agreement is. It depends yeah, on I'm what's in the contract. Yeah, I'm putting all that. you kidding me? You, they got yeah, it. It all depends. So it's on your contract. And if you're doing a multifamily property, again, it's hard for you to meter how much water the second floor is using compared to how much water the third floor is using oh, compared to how much the first the floor is using. So it's like very difficult to gauge that. And if I split it three ways and that's now like an issue, then they could take me to court. Correct. Damn. Because they could be like, well, I never use the water. So I don't shower. I go out to the gym to shower. So I've never used the water ever. And like, how are you going to prove Well, I have 50 that? cameras around. <laughs> And attach your car so I know where you go. I got a I got an Apple thing right on the car. And then the judge would say that's an invasion of their privacy and yada yada yada. And that is insane what. to me. Yeah. So So if you don't have a meter, you can't but so you can you can track the electricity. You can yeah. can you attract the gas from each floor? Yes. Each each unit should have every all the utilities should be separate. When you're looking for a multifamily property, you should look for that as well. Make mm -hmm. sure that every unit has separate utilities. Right. And I was going to say, too, like, what if I got a house and I didn't know that the first and second floor were tied together? Then I'd still be liable. Yes. Got it. Um, have wait, a what? home inspection, bro. So no matter, no matter what I do in life, if I go, like, I have, like, a 50-unit property, I'm paying the water? Yeah. 
Are you serious? Like in an apartment complex, I'm paying the water? Yeah. That's crazy. You can, you know, inc- when you're making up your rent amount, you can, in your mind, say this is budgeted for the water. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Then I'll do that. Yeah. If I can, is that like a, is that a front of prime practice? No, because you're thinking about what are your expenses for the unit? Yeah. Like how much money are you putting into this unit? I'm trying to like have everything. I'm yeah. trying to have this pay for itself. Exactly. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to have, pay nothing for this. You Correct. Know what I mean? And if you have a four unit, you have to think that you now have to pay more for garbage disposal as well. Like if it's under a three family, you don't actually need a commercial trash can. You can actually just have like the trash cans that they roll out to the street. But if it's a four unit or above, then you got higher trash expense as well. I love these conversations. These are like the best type of, you know what I mean? Wealth, wealth creation and wealth building, just hiccups that you would never even expect. I just like learning. Yeah. I'm a learner. I am a lifetime learner as well. I love learning. I'm like the person that's always front and center at every class because I'm there to learn. You nerd. <laughs> I am. I am a proud nerd. I love it. Like I absolutely yeah. like love it. Yeah, so. nah, me too. I definitely grew into it. I wasn't a nerd when I was like younger. I was just like I was scared. I was scared to be a nerd. I was like, nah, not me. It wasn't cool. Not me, not me, not me. Now screw this class. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm for sure a nerd now. Yeah. And I'll own it. Like I think if you're not a nerd, you're kinda I mean, it's so cool to be a nerd now. Like, think about it. All the nerds have all the money. Like, yeah, think about it. Exactly. Like, all those cool kids. I was like, I'm like, I want control of my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think you got to educate yourself. For sure. Because you don't know what you don't know. Sometimes you got to break some barriers. Sometimes you're living off of like conditioning. You know what I mean? You're, mm-hmm. you're, your parents taught you a certain way. Your friends taught you a certain way. The world taught you a certain way. And you're operating off of what you think is true. Yep. But then you learn it's it's not that way, and then you get to like it's like it's like it's like a it's like breathing for the first time. Yeah, taking baby steps. You know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, that shit was dope. I'm sorry, I, I was swearing, but um, <laughs> no worries. I was like, can I swear? I don't know if I can. No, you can. <laughs> okay, excellent. Yeah, now nah. I know. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Swear away. Swear away. I'm not going to like I, I don't purposely swear, but yeah. every now and then it'll just come out, you know. Yeah, no, nah, I kind of swear. Mm-hmm. I'm a swear. I should probably be a little bit better with it, honestly. Um, yeah. But this is also because it's like a little bit more of a comfortable setting. It's like in my house. I'm like, I got the control of this stuff. Yeah. So, so like, you're like, I can totally edit this. Yeah, I can oh, do whatever like, the <laughs> fuck I want. You know? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. But I'm sorry if I, if like, you know, cursing offends you. No, 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 no we're no, good. I'll, I'll dial it back. We're good. Even though That's it cool. is the house, I'll, I'll dial it back. You know what I mean? <laughs> Make sure you feel comfortable. It's a, you be, do you. Yeah, no, I feel mm-hmm. that. So uh, we got into real estate. Is there anything like that you want to like specifically talk about for like uh, like any like expertise or anything that you want to like go over for real estate? Ooh, for real estate, um, there's it's the number one tool for wealth. Like that is if you look at every single millionaire that's out there, they have real estate in their portfolio. So definitely, oh, there's so many tax advantages too as well. Um, just get yourself educated, like on real estate. Um, and also, my biggest tip would just be like, don't fall victim to the first agent that you meet. Because again, I understand people's perceptions of realtors, and there's a lot of bad agents. There are like a shit ton of bad agents out there. And yeah, a lot of people, most of the horror stories that I've heard have been from, you know, agents that just weren't educated they were in it for a paycheck and that was it and a lot of people have fallen victim to that because the bar of entry for real estate is so low that anyone can be a realtor like absolutely anyone if you decided hey you know what i'm gonna be a realtor today you can go take a 40-hour class pass a test and be a licensed realtor like Mm -hmm. that's it so make sure that you ask questions and you do your research and you talk to people like i think that's going to be my biggest thing that i right. want to share with people i love that honestly you know like you even mentioned that earlier like just talking to more agents you know what i mean just to inform yourself to be well-rounded just to have access to perspective you know what i mean i think that's that's absolutely crucial and i love that you you know you you tell us to do that because a lot of people will be like no like come to me for all your answers you know what I mean? That shit kind of shows like the type of person you are. And it kind of like validates that I can trust you more so. And I think people kind of, 
don't really like uh, put trust into their calculations. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I do. Um, you know, I, I find that I, fi- I find that admirable, and I think that's like a really noteworthy part of your character. So. Well, thank you. I am in it to see everyone succeed. Whether you choose to work with me or not, I want to make sure that you're educated. Like, that's the biggest thing for me is making sure that you know what to expect and you know what's coming next. And I learn a lot from other agents, and there's still things that I'm just like, what? I had no idea you could do that. You got to pay for the fucking water? (laughs) (laughs) Are you kidding me? I'm not, but like... What? Stuff like that. And like, there's always someone that's going to know more than you and just seek out that, you know, next person up. Right. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. I definitely want to get more in contact with people and just understand this. You know what I mean? I don't want to make mistakes. I want to, I want to continue to keep on growing. You know what I mean? Not just for me. Like, I want to, like, be able to do things. And I know money is, like, one of the most important things. Unfortunately, like, people will just validate you based off of the wealth you create. And they'll kind of, like, weigh your opinion based off of how much wealth you've acquired and whether or not you're noteworthy, whether or not you're someone that they should listen to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's kind of, like... I just want to help people. I want to. I want to give people perspective. That's why we kind of like. So I, like I started this podcast, just kind of get some insight on just normal people, real people, <laughs> going through real stuff, real information, and just growing. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I definitely want to get in more contact with more people because there's definitely going to be so many mistakes that I can learn from them, from their mistakes. So. Th- The best thing that I heard is to stop looking at mistakes as mistakes. Mm. Like you are, they're learning opportunities. It's an opportunity. And failure is okay. Failure ain't failure. It's totally okay to fail. Like if, like Gary Keller, our CEO and founder of Keller Williams, which I absolutely love my brokerage because I believe in what this man has to say like i believe in his whole being um (laughs) probably sound totally geeking out right now but no that's um, good you admire who you work with i really do admire what he says and his biggest thing is that you need to fail faster you need to fail faster right and the faster that you fail the faster you'll learn the more successful you'll be and just keep failing and his biggest word is onward because again The faster you fail, the faster you learn. Because think about every failure you've had in life. Have you not learned from it and decided, I'm not doing that again? For sure. It makes you more resilient. Exactly. Now, think about all the times where you were too afraid to fail and you did nothing. You just prolonged your learning. Exactly. So fail faster, fail forward. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Fuck yeah. I see. Yeah, let's get it. Um, what was I going to say? I keep saying that too much. <laughs> what was I going to say? Yeah, what was what I going to say? You know, maybe what you should I have like say? a list like of questions I and like know. set it up somewhere. I like, know. Yeah. Definitely. I definitely need to have like a little bit of a list. Um, that's something I'll do moving forward. Yeah, I want to create like free flowing thought, but I also definitely need to have some like, like a little guideline. Yeah, yeah. Facts. Like when things just, uh, yeah. Like, uh, what do I say to fill the void? But it's the not just silence. about filling the I'm void. Kidding. It's just like, I want to like, so like. I want to know like more so about Lucy. Like we we talked about like, we, we can also wrap it up if you want to. I don't know if you're like mm-hmm. if you want to like but um it's 112. I give you a whole 15 more minutes. Okay. And then I got to go check my dog and then go to work. <laughs> All right, bet. Yeah, so I mean today's today's this is just like a little side note. Like mm-hmm. uh today we kind of just like touched over on real estate and how I was just asking you a bunch of questions on how I could get started, how I could start building some wealth. Uh, we talked a lot about rentals. Obviously, rentals really isn't your specialty, is it? Like Rentals, not really my specialty. I do. I am investor heavy and I do list a lot of multifamily properties. Perfect. So, so I came with some, uh, came to the right person, you know, talking, sure. talking some right stuff. Um, cause, so if anyone is like looking for like investment knowledge or information, sure. definitely hit up Lucy. Um, so we touched up on that and I guess we touched up on like... Nothing else that you want to touch up on real estate? No, yeah, I think I'm good. I mean, I'm, I've got so much knowledge with real estate. Like, literally, you can just spit fire questions, and I'll just sit here and answer them. 
Yeah, absolutely. But I don't even know what I don't know. As we mentioned, like, I don't even know what questions I would even get started with. Right now, I'm only, like, asking off of my current situation and what I want to do to get started. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm sure I will have more questions later on. I'm sure, like, as time goes on, like, maybe even, like, a week or two. You know yeah. what I mean? Whenever you have a question, feel free to ask. If I don't have an answer, I'll find an answer for you. I'm not just going to make shit up. I'm going to go figure it out. And I am a very much so a creative thinker. So like when people come to me with like unique situations, I absolutely love it because I'm like, oh man, how can I make this work? Um, a good example is someone that came to me who had talked to several other agents and they told them, oh no, you can't buy a house because they currently own a property it's a, an interesting story. Their mom, it's their mom's house. It's a multifamily property. It's technically their mom's. The mom had some, you know, struggles and they had to refinance the property and they put the daughter on the loan in order for them to refinance it so that the mom could still stay there. So she doesn't really own a property, but on paper, she owns a property. And because she owns a property, every other agent that she spoke to told her that she couldn't buy another property. And I'm like, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> like, you can totally buy another property. Here are your options. Because I'm like, okay, you can refinance that property again. And you can pull out the equity. You could do a cash out refi, pull out some of that equity, and then use that money to finance another property. You could also get a home equity line of credit on the property so that you can, again, touch on that equity and invest it into another property. There were two options right away that I could, was able to provide her with. And then I was like, another option is, you know, you could sell the property. I don't think that you would want to do that because it's your mom's home, but that's another option. Like, you have options. So for someone to come around and say, no, there's nothing you can do, it's like, that's not true. You have to think a little bit more creatively. Um, same with new construction, I can go on. <laughs> like there's other things too. Or there's always a way around. It's like, think about the rich. They always find a loophole and I love finding loopholes. I love that. I love that. I was going to say, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Because I, <laughs> I literally, I literally, I literally get lost in like what you're saying. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'm like, just like absorbing it all. And then like, I, I forget my freaking question. You know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> oh, man, I got to take a second. What was it? Oh, as far as like the contracts go, like, yeah. I want to know, like, m like more like what I can and can't put in the contracts. Talk to your attorney. Okay. That is going to be my recommendation. Find yourself an attorney that specializes in landlord-tenant law. They are going to be worth every single penny because even if it costs you a, a lot to write up a contract, you're going to use that agreement multiple times with all of your tenants. So you may have to, you know, pay some money up front, but again, it's quality and they are protecting your investment. And this is your single largest investment. Why would you cheap out? Like make sure that you are protecting yourself and right. hire an attorney. Like got it. Simple. So just, I guess to kind of like finalize this question for today. Um, mm -hmm. So if I have a property and it's not cash flowing for whatever, how long should I stay in it before I decide to sell the property? If you have a property that is not cash flowing and it's costing you money every month to have this property, I would sell it right away. I wouldn't sit and think about it. I would just get rid of it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. I mean, I think I feel like that's good for like our first our first little touch up. Awesome. You know? I really wanted to get into more like about your background. Yeah, I was like, I was not expecting to speak so much about real estate. I was thinking, really? I came into it like totally thinking that I'd be speaking around like other things. You want to get yeah. into it? I mean, let's go if you've yes. got a question. Yeah, I mean, I want to know like, I mean, I, I suppose we could talk about adversity. Okay. Some Good adversity job. that you faced. Man, um, well, I am a teen mom, so that's an adversary, I, I guess. I just said adversary. That's totally not what I meant <laughs> to say, but you got the gist of it. Um, yes. But yeah, no, um, I have two immigrant parents. They're, you know, both primarily still Spanish speaking only. I am one of five, well, technically one of six but only five are alive. My brother, 
my oldest brother passed away due to some sort of I have no idea exactly. You don't know. Like um I knew him but I didn't he was like from my father's side so I didn't really spend much time with him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um so yeah, he passed away. I think I don't know. It was probably drugs related. I'm not like 100% sure. I just know he didn't wake up one day and he was probably mixing like mixing alcohol and prescription medication so that's what happened there um i was raised with very 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 poor parents who had a very very poor mindset um which is basically you live to pay bills then you die <laughs> which there's oh, no nah. like there's no oh let's uh, build wealth or accumulate wealth there was none of that or um, I guess in my family, the only ways that you were like wealthy or would could become wealthy is if you played sports. It like no, I went and got myself a job at Carvel and <laughs> started working. At, so like I was like, yeah, no, this is a better fit for me. I will work for my money, the legal way versus like trying to get rich quick. Like so again, I learned a lot from their mistakes and I just knew that I didn't want to repeat the same mistakes so I'm grateful for them fucking up as much as they did honestly speaking thank you thank you if you're watching this thank you so much um other than that like uh I'm trying to think what, what other crazy things that I've, I've I've yeah sorry my life is if like my older daughter she's like yeah mom like your life's pretty crazy like as far as like where i came from to where i am it's like nine day so yeah congratulations thank you i am doing my best i'm really happy about that mindset too just to kind of be grateful for like even like the hard shit yeah for sure you know what i mean i think that's what it takes um yeah that's definitely what it takes i think you gotta just realize who you are i mean you gotta love yeah. who you are you do you know? I think if you have love, you gotta like, you gotta be grateful for everything. You've gotta express gratitude. Like even like, I, I'm very grateful that I was able to find the company that I'm with and the company that I work for because they were able to open up my mind to other possibilities, and they just taught me the power of mindset because you can sit and dwell on all of these negative things that have happened or you can choose to frame it in a different way like um i know still some of my siblings are stuck in like oh man well you know this was so effed up this happened and this happened i'm like you can stay in victimhood where you're the victim or you could choose to be the victor like you can choose the way that you see things and if you choose to focus on the negative, then guess what? You're only going to attract more negative. If you choose to see things in a different perspective, like, okay, what was the lesson to be learned from this negative thing that happened? Right. How can I, where's the silver lining? How can I make this positive? Right. Like, no matter what it is, like, oh, I was driving down the road and I got pulled over and I got a speeding ticket. Okay, well, Where's the silver lining? You have a car in order to get a speeding ticket. So right there, you're already winning. Like, you know, there's people out there that don't even have that. Right. So express gratitude. And, and even still, like, it's it's all based off your actions. Like, you yeah. got yourself exactly. that speeding ticket. If you take accountability, then mm -hmm. maybe you can, like, start taking accountability in ways that builds rather than destroys. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, quick question. Did you ever feel like a victim in your life? Um, yes, growing up, I definitely felt as though I was a victim. Um, it wasn't until like my adult life where I was like, you know, there are certain situations that I put myself in. So like, I have no one to blame. Like I can't play the victim part because I did it to myself. So um, what was like the event that switched it for you that made you like start taking accountability for Lucy? So, oh man, um, it actually happened when I left Florida. So I moved out of Florida like in 2010 and I actually had, this is a little awkward, but um, I had gotten arrested for getting into a fight with someone and I then realized, I was like, oh my God, I'm in jail. I'm like 
I'm actually in jail right now because I let someone else upset me enough to the point where I gave them control over my actions. And I was like, that doesn't even sound like it's stupid. Like to me, I was like, this is dumb. Like you have a kid, you have things that you want to do with your life. And here you are sitting in jail because someone said to you, oh, because someone was they were in the wrong and trying to blame me for something that they did. And I despise being lied to or liars. Like for me, honesty is like key. Like if you lie to me about something, it doesn't matter how small it is. Like I literally lose all faith and trust in you. And you you might as well just be dead to me at that point. Um, <laughs> just kind of play. crazy. Um, but I really don't because I grew up with, you know, for me, like what felt like pathological liars. Like with my parents, they would always like embellish or they're always like, I don't know. It just, it triggers me. So I'm it's just like when you, yeah. So I'm like, oh, no, oh, get away from me. Like, I don't want anything to do with that. So. No, I feel that. So to me, I'm like, okay, like honesty. And this person was like a liar. They were just like straight up just like a liar like every word that came out of their mouth was like straight up a lie and I was just like oh my god like this person I allowed this person to trigger me enough where I got physical with that person and in my mind I was like I don't I had to spend two days in jail (laughs) mind you because I didn't have anyone to bail me out at the time so I'm like okay two days in jail for getting into a fist fight with someone over them lying like what like okay I like at that point I was like well do you want to prove everyone right like because at the time like I think I was 19 so I had a two-year-old at the time like so like at the time everyone's already telling me oh you're not gonna do shit with your life you're you know gonna be on welfare your whole life and yada 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 it's only a matter of time before you get pregnant again and you might as well just apply to be on section eight and like basically you're never going to do shit with your life like that was literally all I would hear from everyone that was around me at the time so I was like okay you are literally proving everyone around you right with your actions and I sat there for two days and pretty much thought about my life and where I was headed the direction that I was headed in and decided like I am going to do better for that little girl because she's not going to have the same, like, she's not going to have the same fucked up childhood that I had. Like, I refuse to let that happen. And that was a turning point for me because I was like, you know what? Like, this is it. Like, it doesn't get any worse than this. So that was my, that was my bottom. And then from there, I was like, fuck these people. I'm moving. And I ended up like, picking up and moving all the way to Massachusetts from Florida without knowing anyone in the state. Like, wow. straight up just was like, okay, I know this is a toxic environment for me. I'm out. That takes a lot of courage. For sure. Yeah. So when you got here, like, how did you get started? How did you begin your new life? Man, Craigslist, man. That's how. <laughs> what do you mean Craigslist? Like, that's how you found Craigslist a job Craigslist is how I found a job and stuff. That's, like, literally, like... I did have, like, a friend that I knew of that was local, and I was like, okay, I did, like, hit him up for support, like, as far as, like, helping me get around up until I was able to get on my own feet. And then I was like, okay, we're good. Like, this is good. But so you Craigslist have no family over here? No, I have no family. Well, now I do because my family came following me. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, like 10 years later. Um, like literally following you? Yeah, like literally like Did you tell up. them where you were they, or did they like search for you? Um, No. So like it first started with my mom. So like a few years ago, she was living out in Texas. She called me up and she was like, hey. I'm in Massachusetts. <laughs> no, not like that. More like, hey, I need help. Like I'm in a bad situation. I need to get out of it. Can you help me? And I was like, okay, fine come on up so I opened the doors to her and she moved in for a few months and then she was able to you know find her own place and then she moved to Hartford so she's in the Hartford area now and then a few years later after that my old one well my youngest brother moved with her and then most recently like 
couple days ago, my middle brother just no uh, moved in with her as well. So like I said, they just all kind of found their way back to me. Sort of, kind of. Do you guys have yeah. a good relationship or is it like the same when you were younger? Um, It is definitely an interesting, complicated relationship because um, like, yeah, it's definitely interesting I don't know what better word to say it like me and my mom have an interesting relationship because my mom has been through so much shit in my life in her life that it makes the things that I've gone through for me at least feel like less significant even though it's it, it's probably not the best way of saying that but it just makes me feel like that's one of the reasons why I'm super grateful I guess because I know that it could always be worse it could like literally always be worse. Yeah. And I know she was just literally doing the best that she could with the information that she had. So she's just, again, product of her environment, just learning, you know, she just doesn't know better. So like I really don't feel like. As emotional as you were? Yeah. Like I know growing up there was a lot of like negative feelings and like I couldn't wait to get out of the house. Like I think. Uh, yeah, when was it? Like, my mom abandoned me and all of my siblings when I was, like, 13 or 14. Yeah, she, like, just straight up picked up. And this is where I, I just realized, oh, my goodness, full circle. So my mom picked up and moved from Yonkers, New York, to Florida, like, overnight. Didn't tell anyone where she was going. Um, my brothers had gotten into a fight with my stepdad, and then we put all of my stepdad's stuff out on the street, and my mom came home, picked up all of my stepdad's belongings, packed up her shit, and then just, like, bounced. And, like, two months later, I finally, like, hear from where she is, and she's living in Florida, and she's requesting for us to go move with her. And I'm like, I, at the time, was 14. Teen, requesting like what be like just like called you guys and say hey come no with didn't me. even talk to me talk to my dad and my dad was like well your mom's living in florida and you have to go move with her and i'm like i'm not effing moving with her like no she just left me i'm not gonna go with her and my dad super embarrassed me um pulled me out of my friend's house and like slapped me in front of the entire neighborhood like you're fucking moving yada 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 and i was just like oh my god did he just do that like what my dad had never put his hands on me before so I was just like totally like in shock and then it was 4th of July 20 2003 and me and my brother Luigi um were placed on a plane to move to Florida like I didn't want to <laughs> but that's how I ended up in Florida and I think about it now I'm like oh man that's why I was able to just pick up and go because I saw that from my mom she was able to just pick up and go and like start a whole new life somewhere else and I think that's why I wasn't afraid to just do that as well just full circle moment for me there. that's dope no you definitely picture that's crazy mm -hmm. so you're your mom lived with your stepdad? She just left you with the stepdad? or she No, she left. So what happened was my brother, my youngest brother, um, was with them in the car. They were going on a car ride or something. And my stepdad, so we had kind of like, he was cheating on my mom. Like he's always cheating on my mom. Right? They're not together anymore. But he was cheating on my mom. Me and my other siblings, we knew it. We presented her with proof. We had, like, phone-recorded conversations that he had. How with, the like, hell are you guys women. doing that? It was, like, back in early 2000s where you can – my brother, my older brother, is, like, a tech – it was like a super tech nerd. So he would record everyone's conversations. Like, because you had just your landline. Like, you didn't really have cell All you need to do is just pick up another phone in the house. Yeah, and record the conversations. So he recorded conversations that my stepdad was having with these other women, played it for my mom. My mom was like, oh, mind your business, yada, yada, wow. yada, whatever. And they were, so my younger brother, my mom, and my stepdad were in the car. They were driving somewhere. And then my mom and stepdad kind of got into it or something. And then my stepdad hit my mom and my brother, younger. Um, my stepdad also, just for reference, was uh, he was a professional, oh, actually an amateur boxer, by the way. He won like 
the silver gloves or whatever. I don't follow boxing at all. Yeah, but no. just to like, um, so he hit my mom. My brother lost his shit, which, you know, he had every right to. And my mom, instead of like kicking my stepdad out of the car, kicked my brother out of the car. So then my brother had to walk home. And when he walked home, he told everyone what happened. And my um, other brothers, because I have three brothers, three older brothers, they were all very, very upset, obviously. And they were like, if he fucking comes here, we're going to kill him. Like, you know, yada, yada. Um, So my stepdad never showed his face back at the house. Um, They put out his stuff. When my mom came home, she was upset because we put out all of his stuff. So she, in turn, just grabbed his stuff, grabbed her stuff, and then left. Moved to Florida with him? Yes. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Damn. So, yeah, fun stuff. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. I was just like, I didn't even know where she was, like, for the longest time. And I was just like, I didn't care. I didn't care to know. Damn. Look mm-hmm. at you, little warrior. I mean, uh, I was kind of used like, I don't know. With my mom, we had gone through a lot, like from when my parents divorced, like we were homeless for a while. There were like stuff like, which again is why I'm like, oh man, I'm making all these connections today. I was like, man, like I realized why home is so important to me because I realized that it's providing stability for, for a person, for an individual or for a family having a home so that's why i really enjoy or get that extra smile from first-time home buyers um totally referencing that moving on that's Uh, so important that's a very (laughs) important part of your story like Mm -hmm. don't ever like take lightly of that you know Mm -hmm. like it's good to share you know okay well thank you for that um i totally messed up my pants but moving on so, yeah. So, I don't know where I was in my story. Um, yes. Oh, I think yeah. then moving back. And, like, yeah. we were talking about that. That In the relationship, is it better? Or is it, like, we're kind of, like... Oh, oh, yeah. With my mom. I guess it's better now because she's not with my stepdad. Um, so, she's, like, better. Because she's not doing stupid shit. Or, you know, letting... Or putting a man before her children so facts facts and again i say that she was doing the best that she could because her mom was like it was worse for her mom and like much worse for her mom like her because also her stepdad was very physically abusive like he would beat my grandmother with a hammer like with a fucking hammer how the fuck is she alive she's not alive anymore Um, well how the fuck did she live exactly that is excellent question but how do you beat somebody with a hammer and you literally you hit without killing them Uh, well there's bruises there's all sorts of things that (sighs) and the the crazier part is that my (laughs) like my grandmother went through some crazy stuff because my mom is actually Um, a child of rape. So my grandmother was kidnapped by my grandfather, who was in the military in Dominican Republic, Um, kidnapped her, held her captive, had her give birth to my mom. Then finally, like... Wait, when you say rape baby, like you mean like your mom was born from rape? Yeah. So like my grandfather, who I don't know uh rates yeah actually he he has like i don't even know how many freaking kids um but anyways he like i was just finding out like the other day that my mom has like 24 siblings on father's side oh my gosh so like it's insane like i have aunts and uncles that i don't even know um but yeah i digress so you see like my grandmother literally held captive raped had this man's baby then ended up with my mom's stepdad who took her in they had like eight kids together and he was like very controlling super abusive my grandmother was not allowed to leave the house like for anything my mom had to um she was always like the black sheep of the family because you know she wasn't part of the family because she was you know she had a different dad and all of the other kids had the same dad she was also the darkest 
one of all of them. So like her complexion, the colorism in Dominican Republic is ridiculous. Um, but she was also the darkest one in her family. So like she always felt like the black sheep. She started working at like five years old. It's like she would like cook or do laundry or whatever for people because like in order to have money f- to support the rest of her siblings, um, she had to like drop out of school at a very, very young age. Like she wasn't a, even like her, all of her siblings were allowed to like go to school and do all this stuff where she, on the other hand, wasn't given the same luxuries. Like she couldn't go to school. She had to go work to make money to provide for her family because that was just how life was for her. So like as like so as much as I want to be angry or mad at her, <laughs> like I'm like, damn, like literally she's a freaking survivor. She's just doing the best that she could. So. so what's your shining light? What keeps you like focused? What keeps you like present and striving? Honestly, my kids. Yeah. Um, and wanting to do better for them. That is my focus. Like, I'm grateful that I had my daughter at such a young age. Like literally, I feel like life saving for me because she has taught me so much about like love and just oh, I man. love it. I love it. <laughs> oh man, but like that's seriously, real. she's literally <laughs> like the best thing that's ever happened to me. Like one of the best things because I have two now. So I can't discount the little one. But she came at a different point in my life and has taught me completely different lessons. What's her name? Uh, so my oldest is Jalen and my youngest is Maya. Shout out to Jalen. Keeping your mama straight. Yeah. She's like a great kid too. Aww. Okay. Oh, man. That's good. That's good. That's, that's, you that's, should definitely that's put like some like tissues or something i you should know. yo honestly i will moving forward yeah get your, you know get uh, it together here okay. i'll get you some right now <laughs> oh. oh no let's go that's love here you go oh thank you you're welcome i was like oh. i'm close enough i'm glad i didn't wear too much makeup today Good to Honestly, go. you've been sharing some real stuff today. That's well, I crazy. figured that that's what, what this was about. Because I was like, man, like nobody know like knows any of it. this stuff. Like literally, maybe like my therapist, but that was about it. See, I, I was I was like nervous, <laughs> like because like I don't know how deep sometimes people want to get. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I don't know if they just want to like just go just keep it professional. Just I don't FYI, know. this is literally surface level. Just yes? so you are aware. Um, <laughs> yo, let's get it. Yo, I, you have no idea. I'm just saying, like, look, the stuff so far that I feel like I'm sharing, it's not even that deep. Like, there's definitely <sighs> stuff that goes there that's a lot deeper that I was like, oh, shit. Like, no, I hear that. Mm-hmm. No, I'm definitely with this. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, like, I'm like, yo, this is like the shit I live for. You know what I mean? Like, um, I mean, we probably don't, I don't know if we have time today. But I, I think this is like a perfect like uh, I want to I want to get more into it 100. Mm-hmm. percent If we do have time today, we can. I actually am like over my time. I just looked at the clock. Yeah. I was like, Shh, snap. Yeah, definitely over. Yeah. yeah. So like I, my poor dog is probably like about to pee herself. I think I think this is like great for like a little a bit of a cliffhanger mm-hmm. for like part two of what people can expect. We need to get Lucy back on the show, share a little bit of her story, and the thing is too. Like, um, just like off record or like whatever. But like, if, if by any chance you don't want to share it and you just want to just like talk just to kind of like, um, share perspective, Mm -hmm. like we don't have to post it. That's fair. You know what I mean? Like we don't need that. Just so you know. Well, thank you. I think I may want to leave out the part where, um, my family is full of drug dealers because even though it's true, (laughs) I don't know if it will help my rep, you know. Okay, that's fine. Just, just, just let you know. That's fine. No, I definitely want to get deeper though. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? This is the shit, like I really live for this shit. Like I've gone through so many years of just like staying quiet in my own trauma Mm -hmm. and I know how it's like and I just, like I, I connect so much more with people who experience shit. And like, I, I like talking about that type of shit, you know what I mean? And it just makes me feel better. Cause like, yeah, so that's, that's it, you know? Awesome. I like building people. Well, I am uh, learning that by sharing in some of the 
traumas I've experienced in my lifetime, I am able to help other individuals. So I feel like right. I'm at that point where I'm like, okay, like maybe someone else needs to hear this because they feel helpless right now. And right. maybe just hearing this will allow them to understand that, you know, exactly there is help. There is, you know, a brighter future. Don't give up on yourself. Right. Because sometimes you kind of live in this, this shell of what abusers have put you through. And you think mm-hmm. that you can't share. You think that you are alone. And you think that if you do share, you won't be loved or you won't be accepted. And I think giving a place where you can speak out and know that you're not judged and you're actually, like, understood or um, still loved. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's that's everything. Creed. I was like, oh man, this girl on my Facebook who is a total stranger to me had reached out to me and just was like, um, totally just like, totally, like I'm, it's random. Like some of the people that I meet are completely random and thankful for the internet for that. But she's going through some stuff where I was like, damn, like I've been there. Like I've gone through that same exact thing and you're going to be okay. Like, you know, she's, going through it she's able to identify that you know she should not be living life that way Mm -hmm. and has now you know taken the steps to like move forward and i'm just like man keep going like yeah keep growing like i get it i understand where you're coming from i support you and just as long as you're willing to help yourself grow that then you know i think some perspective that people have like forgotten about is they think that it's all just about their their work. And they think that it's just about, uh, like, fending for yourself. Mm-hmm. Just building that money and just kind of, like, staying emotionless. Staying blah, 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 blah. But I think life is so much more than that. I think it's about truly helping people on a spiritual or on a soul level. Man, yes. Man, thanks. TikTok, also shout out to TikTok for teaching me a lot. Because I go on there for a lot of, like spiritual stuff like as far as like just learning about yourself and learning about why you do the things that you do right you should be asking yourself questions like when something's upsetting you you should be asking like why is it upsetting me exactly so and that's like like just like the example that you showed today like when you're speaking and you're like whoa i understand that that why this is the way it is. I'm, I'm putting some pieces together. Mm-hmm. You know, when you allow yourself to explore, go back into those places, if you are if you build up the strength to be able to go back into those memories go, and, and you just like converse about it, you dive into it, you, you figure yourself out. Yeah. You know, because like we don't realize that we are built off of our memories, off of our conditioning of how people spoke to us, how we speak to ourselves, thus because of how we were spoken to. Right. You know what I mean? Like your body has little, all these little minute stresses and it. it just creates your mannerisms. Mm-hmm. So you explore all of these little stress points or all these little like compressed areas of your body and it releases. It just makes you your authentic self. It, it, it kind of brings you back to life a little bit. So mm-hmm. that's that's why I like exploring, like sharing stuff that people go through. Like it just even if, even if I'm just like sitting here and not saying a word and just letting people just like kind of unravel. And just like making it a safe place and just like securing, like making sure that they feel safe, you know, Mm -hmm. like you can learn just so much from sharing. Yeah, for sure. So I'm agreeing with you. Thank you for the strength and the courage. Thank Thank you for coming on the show. No problem. I was going to say we're going to have to get you to open up, too, because, you know, you got to share your story just as well, you know, and this can be something to help you heal in your healing journey as well. Like. Yeah, possibly. I mean, I've shared throughout the years so many times, like, I, I felt like honestly trapped within myself. So, and that's kind of like why I like started a journey of like self discovery and like reading into books and just like going to the gym a lot more often, just like really truly breaking and just yeah. getting control of myself. Um, so I've like, I've like pushed through conversations, even if people didn't want to hear it, even if like I felt like I needed to talk to people, I don't care if they respond po- or, like positively or negatively. If I got something to say, I'll say it because like I, I need to grow and 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 then based off of how you respond, I can also see if you're really here for me or not. You know what I mean? So I'm not gonna hold myself back. So I've been I've been doing it for a long time. As far as the internet that goes, <laughs> we'll see. But ask away. I'm sure I'll. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. I'll, I'll leave it at that until we meet again. Yeah, absolutely. God bless you. Thank you again. <laughs> no problem. Great show. <laughs>